All right, uh, good evening once more. Um, those that have managed to join us, um, our Facebook viewers, we greet in the name of the Lord. Uh, to start our program, we are just going to have uh, an opening prayer. Shall we pray? Our kind of loving Father, those up in heaven, we thank you for being with us. We thank you for allowing us to meet in this manner. As we start this worship, we pray that you may be with us, direct our thoughts and our minds, may you open our minds to be able to learn of you and be able to learn of your word. May your name be glorified both on earth and in heaven, because we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, since we we are we are we are behind time, so um we are just going to give uh, time to Brother Morgan to give us his special feature that will run for uh, from uh, uh, seven ten p.m. to seven twenty five. Then uh, from there we are going to have um, our speaker who is going to to stand and to, to be able to speak to the people. And also um just remember that we are running under the theme get ready. Our speaker for tonight, and uh, indeed for the rest of our two weeks, will be Pastor Savoy. And uh, the song that we'll be using as a theme song will be um, Lift Up the Trumpet. So we can have a special feature from uh, Brother Morgan. It's your time now. Good evening. I hope uh, I'm audible enough. Uh, Recording in progress. Thank you very much. Um, throughout this uh, week, we will be looking at uh, uh, the different health laws and how one might uh, use them to treat what I believe is uh, a common problem in, um, in our society and time today, and that is uh, depression and uh, sexual sin is specifically um, masturbation. But uh, what we are going to look at today is basically uh, as, as a start is um, three things summarized. And, and that is um, how to the source of health and um, how to maintain good health and how to restore health when it is um, lost. And um, I want us to turn to the book of Psalms 103, verse 2 and 3. And it tells us, uh, it reads, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits, um, who heals all our diseases and forgives all our sins. Now you realize that David uh, presents to us two things. And, and that is disease and sin, both of which come as a result of transgression. Um, sin is the transgression of the law, as we are told in the book of 1 John. And then disease is also a transgression of uh, the, the physical laws that God has set uh, in place in, that work to govern our bodies and how they function. And that is how disease comes about. And what are these laws? We, uh, these are nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, air, rest, and trust in God. Now, David also brings in picture two other things, and that is forgiveness and healing. 
And what he's basically trying to communicate in that verse is that just as we are dependent upon God for spiritual healing, and that is forgiveness, we are dependent upon him equally for physical health, healing. And, and we know that health comes from um, the word heal. And um, health is not merely physical wholeness, wellness, but it comprises of physical, spiritual, and mental wellness. And we are dependent upon God for that uh, as much as we are dependent upon God for spiritual health. Uh, and um, now, just uh, the fact that we are dependent upon God for uh, physical, uh, spiritual health and uh, physical health means we are also dependent upon him uh, and the principles that he has set in place in order to sustain our health. And that is obedience to the laws that he has put in place to govern our bodies. And those are what I just mentioned, um, nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, uh, temperance, air, rest, and trust in God himself, which I believe is the most important. Now, quickly, I want us to look at uh, how is health recovered when it is lost? In other words, how do we, what is the best approach in treating disease and, and in recovering health? I think we are living in a time where sickness and disease is rampant and it is important for us to know uh, about these things. And um, I want to take the approach that I started with. Um, in spiritual, in the spiritual aspect, when sin has been committed and we seek forgiveness, uh, the first step that anyone must take is to repent. It is also the same in recovery of health. We need to turn away from all the bad practices that we have followed and begin following the right practices that help um, in the restoration and in the in the in the functioning of our, of our bodies in order that our bodies might be in good health so to turn from bad practices and begin practicing right uh, principles we have uh, read of the verse uh, that is in proverbs that says if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear me so it is the same even in, our, in the physical sense. If we, if we um, maintain our wrong practices, it is impossible that we may, uh, it is impossible to regain and sustain uh, good health. And uh, the second step is, to, is when we may seek God for healing and restoration. But first, we must begin by going back to uh, where the problem begins, and that is the correction of the bad practices. And lastly, is where treatment begins, helping nature in the restoration process. And why is this important? In order to achieve holistic health, this procedure is important. Without it, it is impossible to achieve holistic health the only thing, if we only treat a disease without going to its source, um, the only thing we are doing is um, trying to mop a flow, uh, but leaving the water running. And uh, we will con constantly uh, suffer from disease over and over again because we have not dealt with the source. Now, just as I said, Throughout this week, we will be looking at these health laws and how they are used uh, in the treating of um, uh, depression and uh, sexual sin, which is specifically masturbation and many others. And how do each one of them, the eight health laws, how do each one of them uh, function uh, in this process of 
treatment. And we'll see um, how they all fit and are uh, uh, all helpful in, uh, in the recovery of health in that sense. And the blessing that God has given us in the knowledge of, uh, of, of, of these physical laws that we uh, will be looking at. Uh, thank you very much. And I hope you have a lovely worship. Thank you so much, brother Morgan, for uh, that wonderful um, presentation. Let me know that you are there. You can just uh, type in your, the comment section. Just type in the comment section if you have your comments uh, or, so that I, I'm, I'm sure that you are there. So without uh, wasting much of our time, that was um, a health talk from uh, brother Morgan. He was talking to us about health and you'll be talking to us throughout this um, program. Um, and now we just going to, since we have run out of time, we'll just uh, go straight into uh, calling the, the preacher for, for today, who is uh, Pastor Savoy. He's going to speak to us. Pastor, it is your time to speak to the people. Uh, good evening, friends. Are you able to get me? Yes, Pastor, you are audible. Yes, we're able to get you. Yes, Pastor. Uh, thank you so very much. We welcome you in a very special way to our meeting uh, uh, this evening. And uh, we pray that uh, the Lord will be able to bless us as we listen to his word. Tonight, I invite you to come with me as we consider the word of God. Our theme uh, throughout the next uh, two weeks is uh, get ready, get ready. And uh, tonight uh, we are looking at a subject that says how far from home, how far from home. We will turn together to the book of Daniel chapter two. Daniel chapter two, we start reading uh, from uh, uh, verse 3, and maybe just to give a brief background uh, of, of uh, Daniel chapter 2. Here we find uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king uh, in Babylon. He is asleep, and as he sleeps, uh, he has a dream. And the Bible says uh, he was anxious to know the dream. And Daniel chapter 2, verse 3 says... Uh, I have had a dream and my spirit is anxious to know the dream. Uh, verse 4 says, uh, as he goes uh, to the soothsayers, the astrologers, those who are considered wise, uh, he says, as they say to him, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream and we will give uh, the interpretation thereof. And as we continue reading verse 5, the Bible says, The king answered and said uh, to the Chaldeans, My decision is firm. If you do not make known uh, the dream to me and its interpretation, you shall be cut in pieces and your houses uh, shall be made an ash heap. The Bible here gives us an account of uh, King Nebuchadnezzar having a dream. And as the soothsayers, those were considered wise in Babylon. When they were required of him to interpret the dream, the Bible says they were unable. And because of that, the king goes on to say to them, when you read Daniel chapter 2, considering verse 10, the Chaldeans answered the king and said, there is not a man on earth who can tell the king's matter. Therefore, no king, lord, or ruler has ever asked such a thing of any magician, astrologer, or Chaldeans. Now, notice, beloved, as 
the king goes to these wise men. He tells them to say, tell me that which I have dreamt. And the Bible says, uh, they say to him, O king, we are unable to tell you. For no king, no ruler has ever asked of such a thing. Now notice, beloved, as we read the word of God, you notice to say there are times, beloved, when those we consider to be wise are unable to provide us with solutions. It is only the God of heaven who is able <laughs> Find a solution, and this time indicates that the white men were unable to give the king the interpretation. Another thing we can learn, beloved, is that devil is not able to find. Now, notice, beloved. These magicians, these are soothsayers, these are people who depended on other things or even on the devil himself to reveal that which they were revealing to the king on a daily basis. They were unable to do so. Why? Because they could not read the king's mind the devil who worked through them was unable to read the mind of king nebuchadnezzar beloved the devil is unable to read the human mind he only sees from our actions from that which we show outside he is able to tell what we think of for if the devil was able to read our minds he could have told the magicians, he could have revealed what the king had dreamt to the magicians, but he as well was unable. When you read Daniel chapter 2 verse 11, the Bible says uh, the wise men responded to the king and said, there is no other who can tell it to the king except the God whose dwelling is not with flesh. And because of the response that they gave, the Bible says the king decided to say, all oh, the wise men of Babylon were supposed to be slain. Now, among in Babylon, we are those also who feared God. In this particular case, beloved, there were Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel. These as well were considered wise. Now, notice, beloved, the soothsayers, the magicians, the astrologers, they depended on the forces of darkness, some on mathematics. bodies in order to reveal the secrets to the king but this time around they were unable to and the bible record says uh, because uh, of that it was commanded that they were supposed to be slain daniel says to ariok who was told to undertake the killing of the wise men and all those who failed to reveal the secret to the king, he says to him, please let the king hold on. And Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego decided to seek the Lord in prayer. My brothers, my sisters, as Daniel and friends prayed that night as he slept, the Lord was able to reveal to him my brothers, we are here to announce to say God still answers prayer. As King Neb as Daniel prayed, the secret dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had, the Lord was able to reveal it to him. Beloved, if we pray today, we serve a God who is able to answer us. He still answers prayer. Prayer still works. Are you faced with a challenge? Do you have a situation in your life that is beyond you? It could be sicknesses. Maybe you don't know where your next meal will come from. My brothers, my sisters, we have a God in heaven who is able to answer prayer. And the Bible says that Daniel had the dream revealed to him by God. And uh, the following day, he goes to the king. Uh, when you read Daniel chapter 2, verse 24. Daniel chapter 2, verse 24. 
find Daniel says the wise men were not supposed to be executed. And on verse 27 of Daniel chapter 2, the Bible says the secret which the king has demanded, the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians are not able to declare it to the king, but there is a God in heaven. My brothers, my sisters, we have a God in heaven who is able to answer prayer, who reveals the secrets as we seek prayer and answers from him. When you read the book of Isaiah, chapter 46, verse 9, Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9, the Bible says, For I am God, and there is none like me. And uh, declaring the end from the beginning, the ancient times that things are not here, and uh, declaring the end from the beginning, and from the ancient times, things that are not uh, yet uh, done. My brothers, my sisters, we serve a God who is able to answer prayer, who reveals the secrets, he declares the end from the beginning. And in Daniel chapter 2, he reveals the dream which the king had. The, the arms and the chest are made of silver. The thighs are made of bronze, the legs of iron, and the toys partly iron and partly clay, revealing to Daniel the things which are wood, be and in this dream daniel chapter 2 32 daniel chapter 2 when you read on verse 32 the bible says the image head was of god and the legs and iron partly iron partly clay and when you continue reading down the dream that he had represented the rise and the falling of kingdoms starting with the first kingdom which was the kingdom of uh, Babylon, and it was later followed by the kingdom of uh, Medopasia. It was later followed by the kingdom of Greece, and later Greece is conquered, and uh, Rome later crumbles in uh, 476 AD, dividing itself into 10. This is the dream of Daniel chapter 2, where we are learning, beloved, that our God is able to reach. How far are we from home is the question we are trying to answer tonight. How far are we from the end of time? The Bible reveals to you and I that, beloved, we are living at a time when God is about to come. The kingdom of Babylon is no more today. We are living at a time when we are living at a time of the divided kingdoms. The first world empire, Babylon, was conquered by the kingdom of Medopasia. Medopasia was later conquered by the kingdom of Greece. Greece was later conquered by the kingdom of Rome, and we see Rome in 476 AD crumbling into 10. The 10 divisions represented by the 10 toys. My brothers, my sisters, as we talk about how far are we from home, the Bible has revealed in Daniel chapter 2 the rising and falling of kingdoms. When we go back in history today, we are able to read as we go back to our libraries. We find how these kingdoms began and they were succeeded each by the other, just like the Bible declared in Daniel chapter 2. It was during the time of the kingdom of Rome, the fourth world empire, that Christ was born. It was during the time of the fourth world empire that we find Jesus being crucified. That is all found in history. My brothers, my sisters, how far are we from home? The Bible in Daniel chapter 2 has revealed to us the rising and falling of kingdom from 605 BC up to the close of time or eternity. The world history is given in these scriptures. As we read the word of God, the Bible says to you and I that the Lord will, when you read Daniel chapter 2, 
When you read on uh, verse uh, 43, the Bible says, uh, so they will be a mixture and will not be united and any more than iron mixes with clay. There are times, beloved, when uh, during the fourth world empire in order to bring the crumbling nations together, they tried to intermarry. But to no avail, they tried to mingle with the seeds of men, but they failed, beloved. Why? Because the Bible has revealed that you and I, that we are living at a time when God is true to his word. That which human beings are trying to do, they failed, beloved, trying to intermarry. The ten nations that were formed when pagan Rome crashed.
Hello, <coughs> so shall we, uh, shall we hold on for a while? The pastor will be back very soon. Sure, is having some, uh, is having some network challenges. So he'll be back very soon. Sorry, friends, uh, for that uh, take away. Just run through quickly. Uh, sorry for the break in uh, transmission. Uh, we were on Daniel chapter 2, where we discover that uh, when you look at Daniel chapter 2, it gives us uh, the rise and the falling of kingdoms. Uh, beginning from the kingdom of Babylon, that was represented by the head of God, followed by Medopasia, which was represented by the chest and the arms of silver, which was later conquered by the nation of Greece, uh, which was represented by the thighs uh, of uh, bronze, uh, later Rome, uh, represented by the legs of iron. And uh, we see Rome uh, being divided in 476, uh, uh, A.D. as it crumbles down uh, into 10 uh, kingdoms that made what we term as uh, modern Europe, uh, where we find uh, the kingdom of the Alemannis, which are the Germans today, the Burgundians, which are the Swedes uh, of Switzerland, the Franks uh, or French, the Lombards, the Italians, uh, the Saxons, uh, where we find uh, those uh, English-speaking people of England, uh, the Suevi Portuguese, uh, the Visigoths, uh, which are the Spaniards or the Spanish, the Herulis, uh, Ostrogoths, and the Vandals were destroyed uh, during the rise of the Roman Empire. As we read the Word of God, the Bible says they'll try to mingle with the seeds of men, but they will fail. They tried uh, to intermarry, they failed. They tried uh, to bring Europe together. Others tried to conquer the whole world. Ask Charlemagne, he tried, he failed. Charles V tried, he failed. Napoleon tried, he failed. 
failed. Hitler tried. He failed. Why, beloved? Because God who had said they will not cleave each to the other, just like iron cannot mix with clay. When you read Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, the Bible says, in the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will not be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, and it will last forever. We are answering a question, beloved, tonight. How far are we from home? Good news, beloved, is that we are not far from home. We are living at a time of divided Europe. The only thing we are awaiting is God setting up his kingdom according to Daniel chapter 2. My brothers, my sisters, we are not far from home. We are living in the very last days of the earth's history. We need to prepare for the coming of Christ. Our theme is saying get ready. Get ready for what? Get ready for the coming of Christ. My brothers, my sisters, the Bible can be depended. If the Lord was able to give us the history of this world, spanning from 605 BC up to the very end of time, God's word can be depended upon. Whatever the Lord said would happen in his way, will truly happen. What we are waiting for from Daniel chapter 2 is God setting up his kingdom, even the second coming of Jesus Christ, when the weak kingdoms of this world will come to an end. My brothers, my sisters, Jesus is soon to come. He will soon set up his kingdom. As we run through our series throughout the coming two weeks, we will discuss that we are on the verge of eternity. The signs of the times are telling us that Jesus is out to come and as we read the word of God, the Bible that we are depending upon, that we will be using throughout the course of the two weeks, beloved, the Bible can be depended upon if it was able to give us the history of this world that true to what happened, it is dependable, written by over by actually 40 people some of which were shepherds, others were fishermen, others were kings, others were shepherds, written on three different continents over a period of 1,600 years. It can be depended upon what God has said in his word. If everything that was said in the book of Daniel was fulfilled to the latter, my brothers, my sisters, it is only the Bible that will provide answers us to the questions that we have in this life. It is only the Bible that answers the important questions of life. Where did we come from? Why are we here? And where are we going? The Bible provides these answers. It is only the Bible that provides answers to the challenges of this world, how this perfect world once was and how it fell under the rulership of the devil who fell as Lucifer, as an angel of light and later becoming the devil. My brothers, my sisters, the word of God can be depended upon. And throughout the course of the next two weeks, as we look at the word of God, we will do well to embrace the word of God because the Bible, the word of God is dependable. It can be relied upon. There is no book than the Bible. Now, beloved, as you read in history, you will discover that no book has been so loved, so hated, so revered, so damned as the Bible. People have died for the Bible. Others have killed for it. It has inspired man's greatest, noblest acts and has been blamed for some of the greatest atrocities committed. Wars have been raged over the Bibles. Revolutions have been natured in its pages. Kingdoms have crumbled through its ideas. Now, when you look at the word of God, even the Bible, that can be depended upon. People of all viewpoints, 
from liberation theologians to capitalists, from fascists to maximists, from dictators to liberators, from pacifists to militarists, they all sage its pages for words which would justify their acts. The uniqueness of the Bible, beloved, comes from its source and the subject matter that is God's revelation of his love through Jesus Christ, the savior of the world. As we study the word of God throughout the coming two weeks, the Lord is saying to us tonight, beloved, we are not far from home. One songwriter wrote a song and says, how far, from, how far, are we from home? And as we listen to this song, it talks of us not being very far from home. The watchman needs to sound the trumpet to remind the inhabitants of Lusaka, to remind the inhabitants of Zambia, to remind the inhabitants of Africa that, beloved, we are almost home. The signs of the times are telling us that Jesus is coming again. In Daniel chapter 2, we read of the rise and the falling of kingdoms. And God says, in the days of divided Europe, I will set up my kingdom. Even today, beloved, we await the coming of Christ. And you and I will do well to prepare for his coming. You and I will do well to embrace his word as we await his coming. May the Lord God bless us as we decide to prepare for his coming. The question is, how far are we from home? We are not very far. We are almost home. The signs of the times are telling us that Jesus is coming again. And uh, may the Lord bless you as you you decide tonight, as you desire tonight, to make a decision for Christ, if it is your desire to prepare for this kingdom that is to come, to replace the existing nations that are here today, my brothers, my sisters, this world will not end by a nuclear war. This world will not end by a pandemic. This world will come to an end when the King of Kings comes again, even Jesus himself, whose coming is very near. We will prove from scripture that we are almost home. Is it your desire tonight? Are you are saying with me, Pastor, I want to prepare for that kingdom that is to come. If that is your desire, if that is your prayer, I ask that may the Lord bless you even as you make that important decision. May God bless us as we and the subject for tonight, I pray that the Lord will bless you as you prepare for his coming. Amen. Amen, indeed. <laughs> Thank the pastor for that wonderful... Um, Simon, uh, indeed, we are very near to home. We are just uh, on the last kingdom, the divided Europe, the divided Europe, and um, we know that the end is near. We are just waiting for the stone to come and um, become a larger kingdom, and the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdom of our Lord. Um, surely, we are very near to home. So, at this po point in time, we would love to just have. Uh, a song before you have the closing prayer and the, the closing remarks. We can have um, a song from the technical.
All right, uh, we seem to have uh, a technical challenge on the, on the sound. I'm sure we'll play the song um, tomorrow. We'll be able to clear up the technical challenges. So for now, we can have uh, 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 closing remarks. Um, let's make sure that we invite more people tomorrow for the the program. The flyers will be the flyers will be shared for the topic for tomorrow, and uh, we still have the same preacher, Pastor Savoy, and we are still running under the theme. Get ready, and uh, our theme song is uh, "Lift Up the Trumpet." So shall we all be available? Let's remember to invite uh, even non-Adventists so that we all together get to get um, the information that has been prepared. So for now, we can have our closing prayer from uh, Sister Joy. Sister Joy can give us our closing prayer. Okay, our, our sister Joy seems not to be around. Um, we'll have uh, Brother Morgan give us the closing prayer. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Are you able to get me? Yes. Y yes, we are. Yes. All right. Did, yes. Did you, did you get the prayer? No. Uh, no, we didn't get it. Okay, shall we pray? <laughs> Hello. Hello, are you able to get me? Yes, sir, we're able to get you, but you were on mute. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we pray. We thank you, Lord, for this meeting. We thank you for being with us throughout the um the service. We thank you for your providence. Now we ask that Lord may help us to 
indeed get ready for the soon coming is near and we are indeed at the very end of the world. May you be with us now as we make this commitment. This I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Good night. May God be with you.